Hi everyone. In this series of videos I'll discuss different musical forms, beginning here with binary and ternary. Musical forms are a convenient means of grouping like works which use the same basic framework. Binary form, for example, divides into two sections and ternary into three. Within this framework, however, elements such as the length of each section, modulations and motivic usage tend to differ across works. From an analytical perspective also, depending on the level at which a work is analysed, different forms may be present in a single work. Musical forms then are structures within which a composer works through a process. The form is not, however, too rigid, restricting the composer's inspiration. Common features of works using binary form include two sections, typically termed A and B. The length of each section is variable. In this sonata, for example, without repeats, the first section is 33 bars in length and the second section is 31 bars. It should be noted that while these works by Scarlatti are labelled sonatas, they're not the same as the later sonata form. In a major key binary work, typically the A section concludes either on the dominant chord or on the dominant key, and the B section modulates back to the tonic for the work's conclusion. The end of the A section in minor key works using binary form is either to the key of its relative major or its dominant minor. Again, in the Scarlatti Sonata, modulations in the A section occur here to the dominant key of E major and here to B major, with a return to E major for the section's conclusion. E major is maintained for the majority of the B section, but a return to A major occurs here before the work's final cadence. Motivically, a binary form work will often share motifs and figures between the two sections, although the extent to which these ideas are shared, like most features of this form, are not standard. Again, in the Scarlatti Sonata, for example, although the A section's opening figures aren't used in the B section, Scarlatti shares other ideas, such as this descending motif and this passage. A slightly different type of binary form is the so-called rounded binary, which, as its name suggests, includes a return of some of the opening material near the conclusion of the B section. In the following waltz by Brahms, for example, the work's opening four bars return here in the parallel key of B major. Rhythmically, these bars also continue the opening phrase. Because this work includes, without repeats, two 16-bar sections framing an 8-bar section, an argument could also be made for ternary form. Given its division into two definite sections, the first of which concludes in the dominant key and the second in the parallel major, and the lack of harmonic and melodic independence through the middle eight bars, however, I tend to favour rounded binary. This work, then, is a good example of how determining a work's form is often not as straightforward as it initially may appear.
Common features of works using ternary form include the three sections are typically labelled A, B, A. The first A section's material after the contrasting material in the B section is repeated, although there may be some melodic or harmonic variation in the second A section. In this work by Schumann, for example, two A sections, both eight bars in length without repeats, frame a six bar B section. The melody and chord progression of the initial A section returns for the second A section with only some minor differences in its initial and final bar. Typically, the A sections in both major and minor ternary form works conclude with a perfect cadence in the tonic, thereby producing complete sections which can stand alone. Unlike binary form works, therefore, where because the A section typically moves away from the tonic, thereby generating a need for its return in the B section, the A sections of ternary form works are typically closed, adding to the contrast of the B section. Often in the B section of a ternary form work, a key change occurs, however this is not obligatory. In the Schumann work, for example, the key of G major is maintained throughout, although after the double bars concluding the initial A section, Schumann begins the B section with G major's submediant chord E minor. G major's relative minor is again hinted at with the use of the secondary B dominant 7th chord. The resolution of the secondary chord, however, is not to E minor, but instead resolves to G major. As here, if a change of key is not used in the B section, often the composer will use different motivic or rhythmic elements to produce contrast. In this B section, for example, Schumann discards the A section's melody in favour of right hand dyads, the upper line of which descends from G major's 4th to 7th degree to resolve as a 5-1 cadence at the section's conclusion. A similarity can be seen between this ternary form work and the rounded binary form of the Brahms waltz. Both works, for example, include a return of the opening material at the work's conclusion. However, along with the reasons already discussed as to why I favour rounded binary form for the Brahms work, the main differences between these works is the key scheme, with the Brahms waltz modulating to the minor dominant at the A section's conclusion, setting up the need for a return of the tonic, while in the Schumann the tonic key is maintained throughout. Despite not being used in the Schumann piece, a contrast of key is often used for the B section of ternary form works. In this work, for example, the B section uses the key of F major and the A section is the key of C major. Here also, Hummel attaches a coda extending the final A section. This work also uses a common feature of many ternary form works and divides the 16 bars without repeats of both the A and B sections into 8 bar sections. Hummel concludes each of these smaller sections on the relevant tonic chord, C major for the A sections and F major for the B sections.
A slight variation is used in this work with Haydn concluding the first 10 bars of the A section's 24 bars in the dominant key of E major. The tonic, however, is immediately restored after the double bar with the entire section concluding in A major. The A section's key scheme and the return of the work's opening material suggests rounded binary. The B section also, which uses the work's parallel minor key, A minor, concludes at the first double bar on its relative major chord, C major, before returning to A minor for the section's conclusion. The B section also includes a return of the section's opening material, again suggesting rounded binary. This minuet and trio by Haydn then once again demonstrates the flexibility with which composers treat forms. It also shows that other forms may be present or suggested within the sections of larger works. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.